Today I'm going to show you how to make what I call a replicator brush. And this is a really good way of making numerous marks on a piece of paper for fur, feathers, botanical studies and a variety of other things as well. So let me tell you a little bit about this type of brush and also how to make one. Let's get the bushes wet and let's get started. Now people very often ask me, what's that brush you're using there for? I know, look at the state of that, I know. It's got numerous problems on it, hasn't it? And look at the state of the metal ferrule, all broken, twisted, etc. But this is one of my favourite brushes. This is one I make myself, and what it does, it creates numerous lines in one go. Normally two or three in this case, for this particular one. I call this the replicator brush. Now there are commercially made ones on the market as well, which you can buy. And they're rape brushes and comb brushes, that sort of thing. I'll show you those in a minute as well. So what can you do with something like this? Let me show you. So we've got a duckling, look at all the fine hairs I've created using this replicator brush. And also a fine detail brush over the top. There's also a little gosling, there you go, that one there. The same idea, trying to get all these lovely fine feathers using this particular brush. And again, using a very small detail brush, just the top layer, which is this one here. This is a Winsor & Newton Coxman Series 111. Size zero, 0 We've got the red panda, again doing all the hairs on there, so we've got feathers when we've got hairs, and also something like a lion. Right, let me demonstrate this particular one. So if I go for a dark colour so you can see it, and I'm going to get the consistency of this paint more to a milky consistency. And when you load something like this up, what I'm going to do, drag most of that paint off again, and then I can start to create numerous lines in one go. Look at this. And this is with more of a milky consistency paint. Moving around, overlapping those lines at the same time. I see straight away the effect that you can get. If I just keep them parallel one another like that lot, that's what you get. But it's still fairly uneven. However, if I use a shop ball one, something like these here, this is one by Rosemary & Co. Really good brushes, don't get me wrong, very nice brushes. And this is a Coma Series 2230 half inch, and also the other one there, which is a quarter inch. Let's just try the quarter inch one, a bit smaller. Just wet it first. And I'm gonna load that one up with a little bit of our dark paint here. Drag most of it off using the same technique. And we'll try doing the same thing with this one. I'm taking a little more paint on there, I think. And you see, this is creating quite a reasonable effect. So it is very similar to my homemade brush. However, I find that these lines are too parallel. Because there's more points on this particular brush, I find that if you're keeping them parallel, they're far too even, far too combed. Even though it's still, as I said, a very good brush. And it's good also, don't forget, something like this on my replicator brush for creating grass blades or anything like that. Very, very good for that idea. And even with my homemade version, I would only use this for the first couple of layers on a painting, on one of our detailed wildlife paintings. You know, the ones which I teach on my Patreon channel. So I always finish with the top layers of a painting with a fine detail brush. That's why I tend to work it anyway with my paintings. As for homemade ones, yeah, these are failed attempts. Oh, well, I should say failed attempts, but to be honest with you, they still work really, really well. So this is one I tend to use, my little wobbly handle one, my broken handle there. That's one I use all the time for my paintings. These ones just by playing around with some very, very old brushes and see what I could make from them. And each one, stay, each one creates a different effect on there. So just get some more paint. So this one's quite rough with all the marks it makes. So it's completely different to my other version here. As you can see, and the, the paint is just as kind of milky consistent as you can see there. Look. Load it, take most of that paint off, and then try again. And you can see, it's quite good actually. It does create quite a lot of lines in one go. Very similar to the Coma brush, by Rosemary & Co. Very similar, but obviously much rougher in look. <laughs> but it's not cost me anything, just some very old brushes destined for the bin. Okay, I've got this one, which is more of a blocker brush, really. And what I mean by that, if I just try loading that up, quite roughly load it as well. I'm not trying to be too particular over it. Let's get some more paint in there, a minute. Let's grab some more of my dark colour. There's too much paint on that brush, so just take a little bit off. If I very lightly touch the paper with this, you can see the effects that you already get there. But you could use something like that for stippling at the same time. See all the stipple marks you can make? 
So think of texture, so something like um, gravel on a footpath, texture on a wall of a building, or even down to the animals that you might paint. So if you're painting wildlife like I do, then there's some wildlife which has got a lot of texture to the skin. Now, please don't forget to click on like and subscribe to this video. This that way around, when I make another video for you on YouTube, you shouldn't miss it. We can still use it for very, very fine marks. And when you've got very little paint on the brush, you find the marks get even finer as well. We've got a very old one here, which is a pure bristle one, one made in China, and it's a size two. So that's even wider. So if I get, let's get a different colour, I'm fed up using that colour now. Let's go with something like a, like a blue, get some water in there from that one. Take most of that off. And I can use that one. Oh no, not very easy. There's too many bristles on there, as you can see, far too many bristles. But I can use that one for the same ideas. I can use it to flick up as well. Again, if you want to create grass blades in the background though, any top layers of detail for say grass, for example, or floral feathers, as I mentioned, use a single brush like a size double zero or size zero, something like that. But the main reason for this video today is to show you how to make one of these replicator brushes. Just using one of those old throwaway brushes that you've got within your kit. I know we tend to have quite a lot of those, don't we? Yeah, I certainly do. Okay, tools needed, piece of card, an old pair of pliers, a craft knife, and of course a very cheap brush. Make sure you wash these out before you start as well, because sometimes the bristles have got some adhesive within them for transportation. Just water basically and just wash those out. Okay, that's nicely washed out. First thing to do is crush the metal ferrule. I know, you can see what I've done with that one there, looking the way it's all sprayed apart. But if you want to do a neater job than that, then you're more than welcome to. So here goes. Oh, I know, you think, oh, I'm going to crush that ferrule. So I'm going to crush it probably maybe about a quarter of an inch, maybe further down the ferrule there. Give it a crush, flatten it out like so. That's all I'm doing, like, look at that, <laughs> like that. Give it a bit of welly. And already you've got two prongs. Look at that. Look now. Already. So if I just flatten it out like so, they're quite long. You compare that to my other one, they're much longer than that. So I can trim those down with a, a pair of scissors, anything like that will be fine. But let's do that now. Just take it down a little bit. A little bit. If you can. And you can see cutting with a pair of scissors for something like this is not always easy. Trying to keep them all nice and square, really. It's like having a haircut, isn't it? It really is. And then using the craft knife, what you're going to do, lay it flat on a piece of board and start to drag away some of those bristles. You want to thin this out. And by thinning it out, what that will do is create gaps in between allowing you to creating individual prongs at the same time. As it does. I'm going to trim some of this off lengthways now. Like so. The same on the other side, so I'm going to thin it out. Constantly thin it out all the time. You can see it's getting thinner and thinner and thinner. <laughs> you ruined that, Paul. I know, I know, I know. This is why you buy cheap brushes for testing this idea out. And why I've made quite a few attempts to get one I like the most, really. But remember, every one that you make is unique. It's going to be different. At the moment, it's a little bit too square, as you can see there. So there's not enough prongs in that one just yet. But it's getting there. So I'm going to just spin it down a little bit more now. Okay, let's get a little bit of paint. We'll try this one out in a minute. We can always adjust it as you go along. So that's been well and truly thinned out so far. Make sure they take most of that paint off that brush. Okay, when you load it. Then you can start to try that brush out and see the effect that you get with that particular brush. Now these bristles are fairly soft. And because they're soft, you find that the lines tend to not be quite as defined. As you can see here, but it's starting to work. It's creating a similar idea to what I've got up there, as you can see. A little bit blocky at the moment. That's better. All depends on how well you load that brush or how little paint actually you put on that brush. Just don't overload it. 
And that's just one I've created. I might thin this one out a little bit more off camera and see what it does then. Okay, pliers. This is where I start to stretch out that metal ferrule. And you see by doing that, look at the way that they've all sprayed apart now. If it's too much, just squeeze them back together a little bit. And then we can try that one. Let's have a different colour again, shall we? Let's go for this lovely golden colour. And let's see if we can create quite a few lines. It's very rough looking this one, isn't it? Quite a few lines in one go. It does work. A bit blocky there. So you can see these are sticking together in the middle there. So I need to fine tune that one next. Now that's working much, much better now. Look at that now, there we go, we've got it. And that's just by spraying those bristles apart. Now look at the state of that. And I might shorten these down a little bit more than that. See it's still blocky in the middle there. So I might just thin a couple of those out so it's more kind of sprayed apart. And then once I've done that, that'll give me much more of an even kind of line. There's far too many in one go there at the moment. And you just fine tune, just fiddle with it as much as you want. And if you end up with no bristles left on there whatsoever, then have another go. Just use a cheap throwaway brush. But you can see how well something like this works. <laughs> just by simply creating a homemade replicator brush. Now if you fancy having a go at making more special effect brushes, have a look to the top right hand corner of the screen where I show you how to make five different brushes and each one has its own special effect. I'll see you there.